I have another video for you on making coffee in the woods. This time I'm going to be using my AeroPress, but what's different about it is I'm going to be using a bargain brand coffee. If you're interested in seeing why I'm doing this to start with, keep watching. So I know some of you must be thinking, Mark's losing his mind. Why would he want to go ahead and use a bargain brand grocery store coffee inside his AeroPress? Well, normally I wouldn't. I am a big proponent of using crafted coffee that is a well sourced, well roasted, freshly ground coffee when I'm out in the woods. I really like what the, the flavor and the tastes are. Um, but this came as a result of one of my viewers asking me, would it make bargain ground coffee or bargain basement coffee taste better if I brewed it through the AeroPress? I thought about that for a minute and I said, you know, it's worth a try. I expect that it might make the coffee taste better, but there's only one way to know. So what I did is I went out to the grocery store and I picked up a couple of small packages of coffee. This is one. I'll show you the other in a minute. This is Maxwell House coffee. It's pre-ground. It does not say what kind of coffee it is. It is a medium roast coffee. I expect yeah, it does not say. I expect it is not Colombian. I expect it is Robusta, which is the cheaper, more plentiful not so good tasting coffee, but it is something you can get cheaper. So I expect that's what's in this. The other one is a brand from Italy known as Lebezo, and that coffee has a combination of Colombian and Robusta type blends in it. And it also is a medium to a dark blend, I think primarily intended for use with mocha pots and maybe even espresso makers. But I also brought my regular coffee, the Rampage coffee. So we'll be comparing the three of them together. Let's get this test started. All right, this should prove to be an interesting test. So here are today's contenders. My standard for good quality, good tasting coffee has been for quite some time now, the Rampage coffee from Roasted here in Canada. I have other videos, and of course I'll put links at the end of this uh, video to those on the Rampage coffee. Uh, it, I ground it this morning, so it is freshly grounded, and I put it in this little can. Oh man, it's a medium roast coffee that I have here. So I mix some of the medium roast and their darker roast, both of which are a little light than, than a lot of roasts are. When they mix together, they make a perfect blend. That's what I like. So that's going to be my, my baseline standard. I'm going to make that one last. Um, Maxwell House. Maxwell House, this is apparently a new blend that they have out on the market. This one's called the Beast Row Blend. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about that in a second. And then the third coffee in today's video is Lavezzo from Italy. So this is a standard one, I guess, what do they call it? The Classico Lavezzo. And uh, so what I've done, you can see both of these packages are opened. I opened them earlier this week so that I can make coffee at home in my regular drip coffee maker so that I could have a kind of a comparison. I won't know if the... Uh, AeroPress is making a better cup of coffee with each of these unless I taste it made in the more traditional way, which could have been a percolator, could have been any number of de devices, but at home we use a, a regular drip coffee maker for our, our big pot of coffee in the morning. So I'm going to start with the Maxwell House, and the way to do this is get my AeroPress ready. So what I did, and this is something that uh, is worth taking note of, and that is coffee, a lot of people will just use a certain volume of coffee, like how many tablespoons they're going to use. And I have a tablespoon here that I am using, but it really should be done in terms of weight to, to volume of water. So uh, my, what I've come down to is this AeroPress will hold about 225 milliliters of water, which is the same as 225 grams. And for that, I'll use between 17 and 18 grams of coffee. Now, how are you going to know? Well, I did this at home, and, and if you're at home, it's easy because you can use a set of kitchen scales for this. Obviously, you can't in the woods. So what I did ahead of time was measure out what would 17 or 18 grams of coffee look like, how many spoons it would fill, and then I can go from there. So I know from that measurements that it will take two and not quite a half, a little bit more than that, tablespoons of coffee to reach about 18 grams. So we'll put that aside. I'm trying to look for some level ground here to balance this on. My pot of hot water. Now I'm going to speed this up a little bit for each, each uh, making of the coffee. I won't wait through to 
make you wait while it steeps, if I can do this without spilling any. And I seem to do that a fair amount with the zebra billy pot, but uh, I suppose that's not totally unexpected. Give it a little stir. Well, it certainly looks rich enough. It's got a nice crema on top of it. Didn't have my filter ready quick enough. I'll get that ready now. You know, there's different ways and different recipes, they call them, for using the AeroPress. And uh, for me, I like three or four minutes of steep time sitting upside down like this. And then I will press it down into my Kopilka Cooksa mug. So that's what we'll do is I'll just uh, speed this up, wait or stop the camera, start it again at four minutes time. We'll press the coffee and we'll see what we have. All right, four minutes. Turn the AeroPress upside down on my Kapilka and press. When you've got an uneven surface like this ground is, helps to stabilize your mug a little bit to make sure it doesn't spill out on you. Don't press too fast. All right. Just short of a full pot or full mug of coffee. Now it's hot, so I do have to wait about a minute for that to cool down to drinkable. And then we'll give it the taste test. All right, still a little hot. Get the aroma of it. Hmm. So I'm going to wait just a few seconds to talk about it. You know, uh, this was the cheapest of the two coffees that, well, cheapest of the three coffees, uh, cheapest of the two that I bought at the grocery store. And uh, I'm a firm believer when it comes to coffee, you get what you pay for. So again, why am I doing this? Well, I guess if you have some Maxwell's at home and you're not willing to spend uh, money on, on more expensive coffee or you run out of good coffee and you still have some Maxwell hosts at home or something similar and you want to know what's the best way to get the most flavor out of it, will this do it? Well, I know what it will taste like from the uh, drip coffee maker. Let's see what it tastes like from the AeroPress. Still hot though. Am I surprised? No, not really. Um, first up, I'll describe the flavor. It is harsh. That's the only way I know how to describe it. It is somewhat bitter, somewhat harsh. The aftertaste is actually worse than the initial taste. I know I'm coming across quite critical, but uh, I guess when you get used to a good tasting coffee, it's hard to drink a lot of other things. Would I drink this if I just needed that caffeine boost? Maybe, but I think I'd be hard pressed to drink this willingly. It doesn't have that doesn't have that full body taste. It has a strong, harsh flavor. That's the best way to describe it. But I guess the question is, is it better than it was using the drip maker? Yeah, actually it is. It's better than that. That's not a compliment to the to the taste of the coffee. It's just the AeroPress did get more out of the coffee but it's still harsh, just stronger. A little bit of grounds. Okay, you know, I'll change my, my tone a little bit here. I could drink this if it was offered me. Well, I wouldn't be rude, of course, I, but I would drink this if it was offered me, made this way, but it wouldn't be my first choice. What I found drinking this at home was that it... Uh, the, the harshness that I tasted, especially the aftertaste, stayed with me well after the cup of coffee was gone. I don't think I like that. Okay, so this was the Maxwell House. Drinkable, just not enjoyable. Let's make some coffee with the Levezo. All right, let's get some Levezo going here. So the Levezo was actually recommended to me by one of my viewers. Uh, I had seen it in the grocery stores. I've seen it in specialty shops. I even did see this when I was in uh, Europe last year visiting my son. So it's a well-known European brand of coffee. I think it is very common over there. But uh, I don't know how common it is here in, in Canada or North America. But, uh, you know, when I opened it up for the first time and I had a pot of this at home, uh, it was 
not what I expected. I guess I expected just another grocery store brand, especially when I had read on the label that it was made from Columbia and Robusta, so they, they got a little bit of strength and flavor from the two of them. It is more finely ground than the Maxwell House is. It's also darker, so but I did weigh it out, and it comes out comes out to about the same volume to get, or the same number of tablespoons to get uh, uh, 18 grams, which was two and not quite a half, so that's two. Actually, it's a little lighter in color, not darker. There we go. Once again, I hot water. See if I can do a better job. This time of pouring it. Just a little slower, I guess. Ah, still smelling there. I think I should have brought a proper kettle for this test. Now, nobody has asked, but you know, uh, you're looking at the thing that I'm doing this on, this little piece of gray material, and you're wondering, what is this, and am I ruining it with this? So what this is, is actually just a piece of barbecue cover that I salvaged to make up, I don't know, call it a tablecloth, just a little organizational space on the ground that I can, uh, you know, put things on, keep them, keep them from getting too dirty on the ground. I now have it good and wet. The nice thing is, it will dry quickly. So I'll save you the pain of watching this uh, steep and then pouring it into the, the cup. And I'll come back when it's time for the taste test. Okay. It's still, again, kind of hot. But, well, right off the top, the smell is not as intense as it was with the Maxwell House. I don't get that bitter harshness in the smell. Let's see the taste. Okay, so I did make this at home as well. I made a pot of coffee for Jean and I. And I liked it better than I did the Maxwell House then. And I like it better than I do the Maxwell House now. It has some interesting flavors. It's not near as harsh as the Maxwell House was. The intensity of the flavor is... I, surprisingly, I expected if this was made for a mocha pot or, or an espresso maker that I would get a much more intense flavor, but I'm not. It's actually quite drinkable. Now, I'm not going to call this a high-quality coffee. I don't think it's going to compare well with my, my Rampage coffee, but if I was out of coffee and I had to run to the grocery store and they had nothing but regular shelf brand coffee, I think that of all the ones that I've tried, which haven't been a lot, uh, Levezo is reasonable. Now, it's a bit more expensive than the Maxwell House, maybe less expensive than the Rampage, Let's put it this way. If somebody offered this coffee to me, I would accept it quite readily. I would prefer to have the Rampage, I think. I, well, I know that, but I'm going to be doing one more cup of coffee anyway. And, uh, yeah, it's not bad, but it's still not great either. I think that's probably the best way I can say it. A little bit smoother, less harsh. The aftertaste is better. The taste on the tongue is better. The body is there. A lot of that has to do with how you make it. So it's probably consistent with the, the other uh, coffees that I put through the AeroPress. But drinkable. Drinkable for sure. Okay, one more cup of coffee. And by the way, I'm not finishing all these because three cups of coffee, I'd be wired. So I'm, I'm having about half of each, but I... I may end up drinking all of the Rampage. Okay, I'll bring it back when the Rampage is ready. Okay, so coffee's still quite hot. Uh, I chose to speed the video up a little bit by not showing myself making the Rampage coffee in the uh, AeroPress or pressing it through. And I regret doing so now because uh, I had forgotten that you would, may not have seen this before, and that is when you're using a fresh roasted and fresh ground coffee, coffee that's still giving off carbon dioxide, still going through chemical changes, when you add the hot water to it, it creates what's known as a bloom. It looks like the coffee's actually growing because it accelerates the release of the carbon dioxide in the coffee. So as I poured the hot water in on top of the Rampage coffee, it actually started to expand and come up to the top 
top and it's a real cool thing and there's an aroma that's given off when you do that as well that is just absent from the other coffee they say that fresh roasted and fresh ground coffee is still alive in that it's still going through changes whereas coffee that's been previously roasted ground even vacuum sealed it's still going to go through a lot of those processes in the bag so that by the time you open it it's not much left in terms of the original flavor whole bean coffee will last a good reasonable amount of time maybe a couple of weeks but the moment you grind it you've got hours to a day before you lose all the vital flavors as i like to say all right enough chat let's get on to the taste test here yeah, already there is an aroma coming off of this Rampage coffee that just didn't exist on the other two. Okay, I'm not going to be pouring this cup out. This is nice. From the initial, initial texture on the tongue, flavor on the tongue, to the point I swallow it and you get that aftertaste, it's just a different coffee altogether. It's smooth, absolutely no harshness, yet there's a strength in it that uh, you gain from the darker roast plus using the AeroPress that gets the most out of that and really concentrates a lot of that flavor into a smaller volume of coffee. Yeah, it, it, there's just no comparison. So what did I learn by doing this? Um, you get what you pay for. Honestly, that, that is the truth. If it's important to you to have good tasting coffee, either at home, on the road, or in the woods, then you may want to, well, you not, may want to, you do want to spend extra money and get a quality coffee. Uh, fresh roasted, fresh ground coffee can just can't be topped. You can't get anything like that from the grocery store. Uh, craft coffees like this one from um, Rampage Coffee, it's it's the one I've been enjoying the most. I've had reviewed other coffees on this channel. I have other coffees, but this is the one I reach for most, almost exclusively when I go out in the woods. It's worth it to me to take the time to use and pay the little extra to pay to get this coffee to just sit back and enjoy it while I'm out in the woods. Okay, uh, not unexpected to be quite honest. I guess the question was, did the AeroPress help get more out of the other coffees? Yes, it did, but not to the degree that you might hope for. You know, the AeroPress is not magic. It's still a, a full immersion press device, so it can only do so much. The quality of the coffee is the single most important factor for a good taste. So yes, the AeroPress help, but it makes a difference what coffee you use. I know I keep saying that, but it's, it's just, it is true. Now. If the flavor of the coffee is not all that important for you, and all you're looking for is that caffeine buzz, get the cheapest brand possible. But you may just want to at least once try some nice, fresh roasted, fresh ground coffee. You may not go back to the, to the other stuff afterwards. Okay, I'll put information in the show notes below about Rampage Coffee, because it has been my primary use coffee, and I have mentioned it before. And I'll put it in be below, and I'll put a link to that original video on Rampage Coffee as well. But uh, I'm going to sit back now, enjoy the rest of this coffee, this late afternoon sun. There was a cool family of ducks out here just a minute on the ago on the lake. Uh, don't know if they're still out there, but uh, it was kind of cool to see the family of ducks. Nice day, nice cup of coffee. I'm in the woods. What more can you ask for? Get out and explore. Take that path, less travel. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.